Hello, everybody. Welcome to the uh, the Michigan Wolverine postgame reaction. Uh, I am Ryan Griffin, uh, one of the hosts of the Sports Carnage podcast. So before you do anything, make sure you go and check that out. We have our Facebook link in the description. Uh, we just dropped a podcast, I think, yesterday um, about kind of this weekend college football games and just everything moving forward. But obviously we're here to talk about the, the Michigan Rutgers game that just kicked off. Usually these are a little bit longer. Uh, I am going to try to cut it a little bit shorter so that I can uh, make the kickoff for the uh, the Michigan State Nebraska game here. But um, what a what a game! You know, I'm sure if you're if you're a Michigan fan, you were on pins and needles a little bit uh, at the end there in the second half, really um, a tale of two halves. You know, Michigan kind of came out and and started to dominate the game, and you felt like it was going to be a game that they were going to be more than comfortable with. Uh, you know, they got some free points before the half um, with Rutgers going for it on, like, 4th and 10. They didn't end up getting it, um, and then Michigan marched down all the way to the red zone. Um, probably could have had a touchdown, bad throw, the, bad throw, so they had to settle for a field goal. Um, but in the second half, you know, it just seemed like Michigan was never really able to uh, to pull away from Rutgers uh, until, you know, the, the very, very end there. Um, one thing that I think Michigan did exceptionally well today, uh, which really probably, you know, was able to secure them the win, was their uh, their red zone defense. You know, they had uh, one spot where Rutgers, they only got a field goal out of it. And then in the second half, when Rutgers was down a touchdown, um, they were in the red zone and Michigan actually ended up, uh, or they ended up missing the field goal because Michigan was able to force like a fourth and ten. Um, and the Rutgers pushed a, a field goal wide, wide right, I think. So big, uh, not not necessarily a big game, um, but it's a big win in the uh, in the sense that you know Michigan's still undefeated. Um, you know this wasn't a, pr a prime time game or anything, but Michigan being undefeated going into Madison next week against what looks now like a very you know vulnerable Wisconsin team. Um, not losing this game, what it does for Michigan is it keeps their goals ahead of them. Um, obviously, it keeps the Big Ten ahead of them, and they still have some, uh, you know, some, <laughs> some, uh, sorry, my, my cat's over here. I lost my train of thought. Um, so Michigan and, you know, uh, so winning this game keeps Michigan's goals in front of them. Um, they still have their clashes with, you know, Michigan State, Penn State, Ohio State down the road. But for, for now, right, they're undefeated. And give me one second so I can stop her. Oops. Sorry about that. I usually don't uh, go grab her, but she was uh, threatening to knock some artwork uh, off my walls over there. Uh, let's get to some of these comments. Second half was so bad. Yeah, the second half wasn't uh, wasn't good at all. Nothing to write at home about if you're Michigan. But one thing I think I guess you could probably take from the second half is that even though Michigan played bad, they were still able to pull out the win, right? Rutgers didn't do anything crazy in the second half either. I know they had a bunch more like first downs than Michigan did, but they really weren't able to convert it into, uh, you know, kind of into so many points. Um, they did score two, oh, they only scored 10 points in the second half. Um, and if you're Michigan and you're only giving up 10 points in a half where you feel like you played really bad, that is still a good sign, you know, moving forward. Um, I thought there were some things that Rutgers was able to exploit a little bit. Um, they just weren't able to take advantage of fully. Dwayne says it was a good first half, but a little ugly second half. Good win, though. They need more work, but keep going. The passing game better get better soon, and they need to stick to the running game. Um... I, I don't think you can stick to the running game because eventually you're going to have to pass if you want to, you know, win anything uh, serious this season. Uh, like we mentioned up top, Wisconsin doesn't look very good. You know, now they got uh, blown out by Notre Dame today. But for the most part, it was a close game. You know, Notre Dame pulled away at the end. They scored 31 points in the in the fourth quarter. Um, but for the most part, the, the game was pretty close. So Wisconsin's probably a little bit better than you would look at like their one and two record, um, and you would just say like, oh, that's definitely a bad team. Um, I think it's still a team that uh, 
Michigan needs to keep all their focus on because if they don't, uh, I think Wisconsin is a team that's definitely capable of uh, beating Michigan if they're unfocused. I don't expect them to be uh, unfocused, though. But the the passing game, I think it does need to get better. I think it will. Uh, the more reps that, um, that, that Cade's able to get, you know, you're not just going to be able to run for 250 yards a game in the Big Ten. Like, that's just... It's just not going to happen. Um, and I think today you saw uh, a little bit of Cade, you know, where he the the throw he made the right throws, but the timing was just a little bit off. And maybe that's a factor of um, him not being, you know, him not throwing so much in the first couple of games. Right. I think coming into the game, he only was throwing the ball like 12 times a game or something. Um, and, you know, moving forward, you're going to have to throw it more. And today, I think you just saw that the timing was just a little bit off. Uh, I thought some of the reads were right to, to where he was th- trying to throw the ball. Um, but the the timing, again, whether it was too far ahead of a receiver or it was, you know, like behind a receiver. So it ended up being incomplete. Um, I do think that can get figured out a, a little bit. But again, I would say that the passing game is a is a question for Michigan moving forward simply because we haven't seen it yet, uh, and they are still without Ronnie Bell, which I think you can forget, um, being that they started out 4-0, you know, had, had a win over Washington, um, and then next week, you know, obviously going to Madison to play Wisconsin. Um, I do think that with how well their offense has looked running the ball, you can forget that their top receiver, uh, you know, is out for for the year. But when they need to start to throw the ball, that's something that, you know, maybe you should remember um, because he's going to play a big part in the the passing game that they're going to have moving forward. Um, and you just hope it's not a part that, you know, they, they can't overcome. Got to stop running up the middle and go outside with sweeps. Uh, yeah, I mean, running, uh, uh, you know, up the middle, obviously, is that philosophy of, you know, you're running north and south, right? You want to make sure that you're getting upfield. And for the most part, Michigan's been able to do that. Uh, but running outside, as we saw today, I think it really helped Michigan on that last drive, even though they ended up missing the field goal. So I guess how much did it help them really, except for running some, some time off the clock. Um, but they were able to run to the outside and move the ball. Eventually they missed the field goal, so you didn't get any points out of it. But I do think that um, having a, a better mix of the run game will, you know, w- will help Michigan moving forward. In this game, it didn't seem like the running backs had as big of a game. I'm going to check the the box score right now um, because, you know, obviously Corum in specific was uh, kind of going crazy this year, and it didn't seem like he had too many uh, big runs today. I just want to check the numbers to to kind of verify that, though. Uh, So, yeah, Corum, 21 carries, 68 yards, uh, about three yards a carry. Um, And Michigan as a team – a little bit under three yards of carry, but obviously, you know, you take like sacks into consideration and stuff. So they're their worst game running the ball so far. And one thing that I thought Rutgers was able to do uh, pretty well was utilize like the, the short passing game. Um, you know, they here, it looks like their, their running game was able to do well. Again, just looking at the numbers, almost five yards of carry watching the game. It didn't seem like they were so effective running the ball. Uh, I know they're able to pick up some third downs uh, with the run, but for me, when Rutgers was able to move the ball mostly, and again, they only scored 13 points, so it's not like they were going up and down the field with anything they were doing. Uh, but utilizing some of that short passing game where they weren't you know, really taking too many deep shots, but it was just you know a five-yard throw here or a halfback screen there, uh, and it seemed like that's how they were able to get into some of those advantageous positions of third and second, third and one, where then they were able to pick up uh, and continue the drive with a, um, you know, with a read option or, you know, with the run, uh, something like that. Rutgers made the appropriate halftime adjustments, and I have no clue what we did. Um, I, I guess one thing that I think Rutgers did in the better in the second half was they started getting up on Michigan receivers. Um, in the first half, I thought they were kind of playing. Uh, they were giving McNamara too much respect um, and giving his arm too much respect, and they were kind of playing off the Michigan receivers. And you even saw it. You no, know, Michigan had uh, 
uh, probably a ton, uh, well, 163 rushing yards, so not a ton of passing yards. Um, but it just seemed like in the first half when they threw the ball, they were able to get a first down every time because Rutgers was playing some pretty, uh, some pretty soft coverage. And I do think that they stopped that in the second half. Um, and not that Michigan panicked on offense, but I thought it made Michigan's offense, um, you know, more clunky than what they would have liked. And it allowed Rutgers to have an opportunity at the end and really, you know, a couple times before the end um, to, to tie the game. And they weren't able to, to get it done. So, again, that's a credit to Michigan's defense forcing the late turnover um, and then the red zone defense forcing uh, forcing two field goals, one that, one that Rutgers was, um, you know, unfortunate enough to miss. Caden missed the open tight end in the end zone. That would have been huge. Yeah, they gave away four points right there. Um, no, I thought it was a really dumb decision by Rutgers to go for it on fourth and 10 um, with like, is there a minute left or something uh, where Michigan easily could have gone down the field and they did score. Uh, but yeah, Cade missed uh, the tight end for, for a touchdown. It was a, it was a bad throw. He was wide open. Um, he dropped it and, you know, they cost the team four, po four points and in a, in a closer game, you know, that might have um, that might have come back to, to haunt Michigan. In this game, in the end, it didn't end up mattering. Um, although I guess you could argue it did because they were only up a touchdown late. And, you know, if you get seven instead of three there, uh, you know, it becomes a 24-13 game instead of 22-13. Michigan got lucky with bad Rutgers play calls. I, I did so I don't. I do think Michigan got lucky to an extent, but I also think overall their defense – still played well enough to win. I would agree, though. Rutgers didn't do anything to help themselves. Uh, there are a ton of questionable play calls that I thought uh, Rutgers went through with. Um, even on the fourth down where they tried to do like that fake, hey, we don't know what the play call is, and then the running back ran under center. Um, I didn't understand that at all. I thought that was a, a really dumb play call. Um, and then at the end where they had the, the fourth down that they didn't end up getting, or it might have been the third down that led to the fourth down where they kicked the field goal. Um, it's like a, a read option that I thought was a, a bad play. That they didn't end up converting, you know, and then they missed the field goal, and then obviously Michigan goes on to win the game. Is Josh Ross still questionable or fully healthy? Uh, we're not, so we're not going to know that yet. Um, yeah, we're just not going to know that yet. And even if Michigan knows that, they're definitely not going to tell us, you know, 20 minutes after the game ended one-dimensional. Uh, I, I think there's an aspect of that. I do think the passing game can get better, but right now it's probably fair to call Michigan uh, a one-dimensional football team. Um, and then next week, you know, again, against Wisconsin, it's definitely an easier game now than it appeared to be uh, going into it. Where was, Haskin at, where was Haskins after the first series? Um, I believe Haskins scored a touchdown on the second series, right? Um, yeah, I think he got the first two touchdowns. Uh I don't know. I mean, he wasn't really effective either. Like, we ran through Coram's numbers a little bit. 21 carries, 68 yards. Haskins had 12 carries for 41 yards. So, neither of them were really able to do much. Haskins obviously did score the two touchdowns. Um, but Rutgers, for the most part, did a good job of bottling up Michigan's run game. Um, that is that is kind of all, all that we have now. Hopefully, we'll be able to do something a little bit longer um, for the Wisconsin game. But I, I am a Michigan State fan, so I want to get uh, on this game so that I can give that game kind of the love it deserves to. But if you guys uh, have tuned in or are tuned in, please go listen to the Sports Carnage podcast. Just dropped a, a fresh new one right off the right off the presses yesterday. So go check that out. Um, Spotify. Apple Podcast, Podbean, you can see it all there. And if you're watching this on YouTube, um, all of the links to our social medias, which is going to be Sports Carnage Podcast on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. Obviously, if you're watching it on YouTube, you already know that. They'll be in the description below. Um, and then if you're on Facebook, I'm sure you're watching Detroit Sports Nation, but if there's a subscribe button, hit that, so that way you guys get all this news. And then we will be back at, uh, back with you excuse me, um, after the Michigan State and Nebraska game. And then we'll be here for the, uh, the Lions game tomorrow as well. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm Ryan from the Sports Carnage Podcast. Go check that out so that you can hear not only myself, um, but my four and five other rotating co-hosts that we have. Um, it's pretty chaotic, which is why the name Sports Carnage fits. So thank you guys so much. This video will be up on YouTube um, probably within the next two hours or so. Thank you and have a good night.